going from top to bottom, we have the uh, banner at the top, which tells us whether we're on a master or a slave. As you can see, we're using a master appliance here. We have active or passive. Um, this literally represents which appliance is currently hosting the virtual services. So the active appliance is dealing with the traffic, the passive appliance is there in standby mode waiting to pick up the traffic should the active appliance fail. And we have link, which you'll currently see isn't lit up because I don't have a slave with this deployment. But when you have a slave and, and a master talking together in a cluster, that will be green as well to represent that. Underneath there, we display our virtual services themselves, or VIPs as they're commonly called. Um, I've got three here in different states. And um, you'll notice the first one is, is yellow, meaning that there's a warning. So this will generally mean that there's a down server or something's not quite right. Um, we also have a status uh, color of red, which means that all servers are currently down. Um, so with this one here, we can, we can see that we've got um, a couple of down servers and one in a maintenance mode, which is why it didn't quite go red. Um, underneath there, we've got a simple VIP called Web Cluster. Single server, it's passing health checks and working. And in front of that, we've got a, a WAF VIP, um, which actually relates to the same thing of Web Cluster. What's important here is you can see the ports and IP addresses that we're using, um, number of connections going through the service, which protocol, which method and which mode are in operation. We also have access to graphs and you can click the little graphing button here to get an overview of the graphs for that particular virtual service and there's also a similar button for the real servers as well. Um, underneath there we move on to the three system overview graphs which are quite literally um, the state of the current system in terms of network bandwidth, system load average and memory usage. This is where you'd really want to just monitor whether the machine is coping with load and running out of memory or you know saturating your uh, network links. Just briefly I'm going to take you through the menu system on the left here. Um, general rule of thumb is anything under local configuration applies to the local load balancer that you're looking at, so in this case this very machine. Uh, we can set various settings under here from our host name, network configuration, routing, play with SSH keys, date and time, a few extra settings which relate to the specific box which we've buried under physical advanced configuration, SNMP configuration, graphing, licensing, and the ability to execute a shell command. Um, generally you won't do that unless you're working with support. Cluster configuration is the menu that has all the virtual service config under. Basically it's all the settings that will be shared between master and slave appliances and synchronized across. So here's where you'd configure your layer 4 and layer 7 services, your SSL terminations, build a pair using the high availability wizard, WAF config, GSLB config, and floating IPs. I'll pay a special note to floating IPs. Floating IPs are um, generally VIP IPs, virtual service IPs. They're the IP addresses that will be owned by both master and slave, so they float between the two appliances. In general, most floating IPs will always be a virtual service, but you do have the ability to add additional ones for um, use as a default gateway, say, when you're doing NAT mode. Under our maintenance menu, we have, you know, as you'd expect, many maintenance tasks from backup and restore to restarting services. System control, so that's very much the ability to turn the appliance on and off. Firewall script, firewall lockdown wizard, and some extra web interface settings. These are settings like the ability to set the port and um, to allow only HTTPS access if you choose to. We also have the password section where you can change the um, web user interface password. The remaining menus I'll go through very quickly. I mean, basically, it's the ability to view the configuration files themselves, which is incredibly useful if you want to actually look at what's underneath. Um, sometimes it's better to look there if it, just to get an idea of what you think you've set up has been set up. But it's generally something you'd work with our support team um, when looking at various configuration files. Reports, um, again, this is a, you know, a, bit, a bit better than the system overview, not as pretty, but um, you know, from here we can see various status reports, drilling down into a bit more information, who is actually connected or not connected, what is the state of those connections. And with the layer 7 we even have um, detailed statistics, which will show you all sorts of stuff. Um, 
from error rates to uh, you know uh, session rates and everything else all broken down in a nice table. Um, we also have the graphing menu here which um, expands out and allows us to pick various graphs for different virtual services as well as the system graphs. Now this is a more detailed view than what we had back on the system overview. Um, so for example if we pick uh, the first graph on the system overview we will see we get not only get that graph broken down hourly, daily and weekly but monthly, yearly as well and we also see it packets per second as well as bytes per second. Um, so again it just allows you to drill down a little bit deeper. We have the logs menu which is exactly what it says on the tin again it's um, all of our load balancer logs again you know we can look through here and you may find yourself looking for events such as um, health check failures and things in the layer 7 log for example which is probably empty at the moment uh, but typically this will be when you're working with our support teams which again brings me on to the final menu which is the support menu we have a handy contact us button the ability to um, generate a support download which is incredibly useful and you'll often find that when dealing with our support teams this is the first question they ask can you please send us a support download it gives us all of your settings all of your graphs and all of your logs which allows us to then work better to help you and just finally we have the useful links page which has links to our manuals deployment guides and various website links including to our um, feedback agent which is very useful Anyway, I'm going to bring it to a close here, but feel free to visit us at www.loadbalancer.org and feel free to ask a question. Thanks. Bye-bye.